Hello folks, today I thought I would share with you a project I picked up recently. An acquaintance of mine, or a friend of mine, his brother had this 1976 Suzuki TS-125. And uh, the motor was stuck and been sitting in his, uh, he's the original owner, the brother's the original owner of the bike, so he's had it for 30, 39 years, I guess it would be. And uh, it's been sitting in his garage for many, many years, and the motor was stuck. And it's only got, uh, I think, 20, 2,600 miles on it, 2,200 miles on it. And uh, he, uh, my, my buddy asked me if I would be willing to take a look at, see if I can get it running for him. So he brought it over uh, into December, 1st of January, and... Um, I just tucked it aside because I was working on my TS-185, my own bike. And recently I was waiting for some parts for my 185, so I thought I'd get some time on this. So I had to get the motor freed up. Um, the reason the motor was stuck is, the, uh, is simply the rings were rusted to the cylinder bore. So it took a little persuasion, a little heat, a little lubricant, and uh, I got it free uh, a week or so ago. What it really needs is just a set of rings. I did mic the bore, and the bore is uh, well in uh, stock specifications. Again, with only 2,200 miles on it, that's what I would expect. It was in very good shape. The rings I'm going to replace, clean up the piston, new uh, wrist pin bearing, clean it up in general, and see if we can't get it running. I'll rebuild the carburetor also as part of the part of the plan. Um, there's also an oil leak from the, let's see if I can, you can probably see it on the floor there. There's an oil leak from the two-stroke oil injection tank system. I don't know if it's a line or, I don't know what it is, but you can see it's pulled there a little bit on the floor uh, at the kick start, or the kick, uh, or the kick stand rather meets the ground. That's two-stroke oil. So I've got to figure that out too, of course. But uh, shouldn't be a big deal. I'll hone the cylinder, ring it, and get the, back, the topping back together. I've already started on the carburetor. I haven't finished it yet. And I tanked it in my, uh, my tank and, and got it clean, but I have not uh, really spent any further time on it. We'll probably include that in this future video. But anyway, I just thought I'd do a little quick profile to show you. Something I've been working on here just uh, just recently. Hello folks, today we're going to do a brief video showing the honing of the cylinder on the TS-125 Suzuki. I'm going to use a ball hone, otherwise known as a flex hone, looks like this. There's a series of flexible balls. There are um, other videos on YouTube that show using this primarily in automotive applications. This is my preferred hone for, type of hone for a two-stroke. A shoe hone, uh, like, a, like a brake uh, cylinder hone, won't work on a two-stroke, or doesn't work very well, because you've got ports cut into the cylinder wall itself. So I uh, always go for the ball hone or the flex hone. The, um, this is a 56 millimeter bore, approximately, and they don't make an equivalent ball hone in 56 millimeters, so I had to round it up and do a conversion to two and a quarter you always go up one size if you can't find your exact size hone, ball hone, because these are made specific to a size, not a range, but a size. And so I had to go up to a, a two and a quarter, and it, it'll work just fine. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, the process. It's very easy. So what I've just done is I've laced this down with a little WD-40. The instructions for uh, the flexor ball home calls for uh, 10, 10W30 oil or a, a motor oil. I just use um, plain old WD-40 and it's worked fine for me for years. So I, I hose down the ball home, put a little bit on the inside of the cylinder as a lubricant. Again, this isn't rocket science. Take the hone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the hone and then plunge it into the cylinder and I'm going to work it back and forth gently full stroke 
oh, for 20, 30 seconds or so, and then uh, maybe 15 to 20 seconds. And then I'll actually speed it up as I'm approaching the end of the, of the cycle and, and do uh, a number of passes at quite a bit faster uh, pace to try to get the cross hatching just right. Now if I'm making complete stroke, you do not stop the hone in the middle of the process, you extract it like that. So now I'll clean this bore up a little bit, see if I can get a decent shot of it, the camera of the cross hatching and uh, give you a sense of what it looks like. This cylinder wasn't terribly bad. The, uh, the engine was originally stuck and I had to free it up. but. Frankly, it only has 2,200 miles, I believe, on the engine, so it's been sitting for many years uh, and uh, in a garage. And the cylinder is actually in very good shape. I thought I would uh, see if I can't give you a shot of what the honing looked like, the finished hone job. What you're looking for is about a 45 degree crosshatch, something like that. And uh, I did an initial cleaning. I had more cleaning to do on this, but uh, you can see, I think, how that came out, and, and that's that's fine for what uh, for what this engine is going to be used for. It's it's more of a uh, family heirloom, I think, at this point. The guy wants to just keep it around, and since he's the original owner, just wants it to run. New set of rings, like I said, I'll clean it up a little bit better, but I want to show what the crosshatch looked like.